all right everybody adrit is our uh, last speaker for today uh, he is 8 years old and he comes from bangalore and adrit is uh, a home schooled uh, boy uh, which means he spends the entire day learning at home uh, but not just through books he he does a lot of learning by observing and experimenting and he is a nature lover he loves plants he loves animals birds any living organism which we which you can or cannot see with naked eyes uh, adrit uh, loves them and he tries to study them and what i what i love the most about adrit is uh, for him to do an experiment he designs his own experiment and this is i think a great great skill to develop for everybody because many a times and as as you uh, uh, you know uh, as all all students who are present here you know if you are not into high school once you get into high school you go to uh, the science labs and perform experiments experiments that somebody else has designed but to create your own exp- experiment requires a lot of passion into what you are what you are uh, you know uh, learning so adrit adrit comes from uh, that background and he he has a very very uh, what i can say a very rare uh, uh, liking that is he likes uh, he likes beings that most of us are scared of so some of his uh, cute pets or as he calls them are spiders uh, slimy creatures uh, and you know things that most of us are not very fond of and he he observes them he studies them a lot um he's he's an author uh, and he you know he's he's deeply involved with uh, study of different species so adrit we are very happy that you are here as as the speaker and i'll not take much of your time i'll hand it over to you over to you adrit yes sir thank you for introducing hello everybody my name is adrit today i'm going to share my experiences with art sports What is an arthropod? Based on the scientific definition, an arthropod is an invertebrate, a living organism characterized by the presence of multiple joints, a chitinous exoskeleton, segmentation, and an open circulatory system. An open circulatory system means that there is no specific uh, organ for the oxygen exchange. Now you can. see that when you think only insects can fit this description especially beetles you have about to be proved wrong there are four sorts of living arthropods today hexapods like bees or uh, you could say beetles crustaceans like crabs myriapods like centipedes and calicarids like spiders i will be mainly talking about insects today Why am I talking to you about insects? Because they fascinate me. I want to introduce you to the beautiful world which we often ignore and sometimes are very scared of to appreciate. And more of the every species matters. I wish more of us were mindful about their importance to the ecosystem we share with them. Any guesses how many insects we currently share the earth with at this moment? Here's the shocking answer: the insects alive at any given point in time are ten quintillion insects. That's ten to the power of nineteen. The number of stars in our Milky Way galaxy are ten to the power of eleven. That means we have more insects on Earth than we have stars in the Milky Way galaxy. How long have insects been on Earth? You may be wondering. Now, based on the publication in Science on next generations, they were sequencing arthropod fossils using next generation sequencing in computational biology, and they found out this very uh, informative thing. Around 479 million years ago, the insect ancestors called the Hexapoda. You can guess Hexa. Hexa means six in Latin, and pada, you know what? It means legs. So hexa pada means six legs. The insect ancestors emerged during the early Ordovician period, while around they did not have flight. While around four hundred six million years, 
the insect flight emerged because plants began to really diversify and grow upwards into forests. And you know how many insects there are which require pollen and prey and places to nest and that sort of thing, right? Now, I have a few observational stories about ants. They're in truth a very interesting organism, even though we're scared of them because they bite and sting and also spray formic acid. Here's how many species of ants are. Over 12,000 species of ants have been identified, while India has nearly 800 species. Imagine having 800 species in your city. A city like Bengaluru has around 125 to 130 species. Imagine that having that many in your backyard, 125 ants. Now, you can see that there are so many sorts of ants and you're thinking, okay, I've seen black ants, they don't fight. I'm about to prove you wrong. This black carpet ant, this black garden ant, you could also see this green head ant, cardfield ant. Most of the black ant species in here will bite and even this bullet ant has a very sharp sting which will, um, leave your hands feeling like a blob of jelly for 24 hours. So now, did you know that there's a creature in the ant world, which is, in fact, some myths. You might have heard about Dracula. He's a very terrifying vampire. But did you know that there's an ant named after him, Dracula ant? It's named so because it drinks the blood of other insects and sometimes of its own offspring. You know what it does? It actually tears open their skin and starts lapping up all the nice juicy insect blood. Now, the larva have a self-healing mechanism, so it doesn't affect them in any way. In fact, they're customized to be torn open. I'm about to tell you other things. Now, you see this now. You can see that this is, um, I think it's an ant hill and snakes live inside it. We worship it in India. Yes, that's a turbine. That's an ant hill. That's not an ant hill, but snakes do live inside it. It's a turbine mound. Now, that's very well worshipped, but you're then wondering what does an ant hill look like? Now, this is what an ant hill looks like. It's more of a volcano shaped pit with a more of a subterranean kingdom instead of a dark kingdom above ground like termites like it. This thing has a lot of uh, chambers and stuff underground. Here is my depiction of an ant colony as a geometry problem because there are a couple of angles over here. Yes. In fact, there's even a branch of entomology. It's the study of insects called mycology. It focuses on the scientific study of ants. Now, it's one of the things, since ants are so ingenious, um, they build nests in the ground. Yes, most of them do, like fire ants and carpenter ants. Some species, at least. Now, you can see over here, uh, this, is, this can be an ant nest, can it? Um, you might have seen these dead ants climbing up trees. They're really huge, about um, this size, like one to two centimeters long. And they're very interesting, in fact. You know what they are? They're weaver ants. They get their name because, they get their name because of the fact that they produce silk. But where does their silk come from? Where does silk come from? comes from is that they use their larva. Their larva use the, use, commonly use the silk for the cocoons, but the, in this case, the larva you use the silk for building nests. What the workers do is that they hold the leaves together. They like use them, make themselves as a chain with their mandibles and legs. And then other workers start making the larva squared, doopy, um, they make them squirt gloopy bit of silk, which glues together the nest. In the end, they have a very comfy and safe waterproof home, which in some cases can range up to 100 leaves wrapped around and around it. And it's very waterproof and safe. It can accommodate multiple ants. Now, here are 
things about ants and other life forms. You'd want to think, well, ants can't have um, discovered agriculture, can they? Here's something that you may not have previously known. They've been doing agriculture for 60 million years before humans, and they've still not developed exact tools because they already have tools it built into their bodies. You can see all these ants hope to go with some tiny other ants parts like them. They're called aphids. Now, aphids are the major pest in uh, parts today, and most of you will hate them and spray pesticide on them. But if you let them be in your garden, then you might notice a phenomenon, very shocking, and I would only previously learned about it in literature, actually. Now, look over here. I've been looking at this part for quite a while now, and then one day, I saw that there were these black crazy ants, the ones who don't bite. They're gathered on this little stuff. And here were some aphids. I saw, okay, they're exchanging some sorts of gloop, some transparent sort of material. I thought they must be milking the honey gloop. All right, so now I was shocked by the phenomenon. So if you have this sort of ant colony in your area and aphids in your part, you can, um, you're very sure that they're, over there and milking them. Now you can see this over here. I'm, you might have learned about leaf cutter ants and they can chop up leaves and deposit them in their nest. But the reason they do it is for the fungal gardens. Yes, ants do cultivate crops. They can't actually survive without this fungus. It's their protein and food source. The, it's one of the only two things they eat and drink. The eating part is fungus, and they drink the tree sap of the leaves on the way home. They need the leaves for um, like farming that fungus. They're really intelligent in that way. Now, there's always been a debate on human social structure being patriarchal, while in the insect world, it's very matriarchal. The reason we call ants queens is because they're female. They, the, there's nothing like a king, such as in termites, which are also use social animals like these guys. And I'll be coming to the explanation of social Now, what happens is that the males simply die off after um, producing babies with the queen. <clears throat> the queens have to farm the colony all alone. And the males are simply these wing phenotypes, things like wasps. When the normal sized workers and the soldiers, unlike in the movies, they are male. So you can see that, well, this is very, this is a hoax on the internet that all the, the workers are male. Now over here, you can see all these ants, like these ants, you can say, oh, these are the leaf cutter ants and we would answer them to the last slide. What are these ants? I come to the explanation of you social over here. The only thing that these ants have in common, even though they're very different species, the only thing that these ants have in common is that they can have only one or a couple of multiple reproductive females. You social means that there's only a special cast of reproductive females which lays the eggs and you know, that sort of thing. It's called monogynous and polygynous. Mono means one, poly means many. So polygynous means that there are many reproductive females. Monogynous means that there's only one reproductive female. And these ants are very intelligent. I'll be coming to the swab intelligence. Now you're thinking, are there other social insects? I mentioned termites as one. Um, also quite a few bee species, at least the ones that are kept by beekeepers do that. And also a couple of species like paper wasps and hardits also have the sort of a um, thing. They are you social. I explained the meaning of you social. They have the wasps, they have something similar to ants when they're social, in fact, similar to ants and bees. 
while if you look over here you'll think it here goes again to me with that now what are you guys up to well what's happened over here is that the river that a mass swapping a plant for a reason but in spite of all their intelligence river ants have been fooled by a specific species of spider a jumping spider called milma plata plata leo idis when we plata plata leo idis i know it's a very long name so we can uh, shorten it to ant jumpers for now now this ant jumping spider there are several species of ant jumping spider in fact now this specific species of ant jumping spider has evolved to precisely mimic the workers of this ant species they use batesian mimicry but they can't mimic the feather moles which is why they don't intermingle with the colony they stay very far away they keep their distance so they can be very closely found to weave in ant trails now over here you can see that these weaver ants are pulling down um this worker ant you can see this black ant who is raising its bottom in the air and doing something it's in fact squirting formic acid now this is ant x now you'd wondering what will this ant x do to defend our spike back so x is the name of an ant which squirts acid just like it's doing it here and y is some very notorious large ant which is armored and stings a specific species of army ant fits this description while z is the name of oops wait yes z is the name of an ant which blocks the hole of their nest with the mandibles so if they have the sort of a thing then it makes them a very effective killing machine sort of colony now they're very clever in that way and ant wars as a very major part of life in the ant in this ant environment all right now you're thinking how do these in intelligent so called creatures find their food i think they simply wander the bout until they uh, hit the ant in a food source something like that no it's not like that if they have an obstacle in the way now you can do the similar version of an experiment if you have an ant colony and um you have an obstacle and a food chain for them now you you take the stick and then you make one end shorter than the other one one is longer the other is shorter and you need to have some sort of a center line so what the ants will do is that they will send scouts on both the sides let me just um try that they will send scouts on both the sides like this and the one who reaches the food first is the, uh, has come upon the shortest route while these guys they message okay this is the largest route we don't want to take this one then they uh, reinforce it with this pheromone trail their pheromone trail which is a chemical that they utilize in almost every day business and this is the path that they will take to the food the fourth chain party wait why isn't this working all right now i'll simply close that now this now you may be thinking okay haven't uh, since ants are the all this polygynous and monogynous um aren't they can't they uh, just populate the world already ants have populated the world except for the, a few arctic places and antarctic places all right now here is the story of the argentine ant colony the argentine ants lived in this blue range they lived in this blue range and then you know what happened the humans came in we humans came in and did what humans usually like to do we shipped the plants and the animals and all the insect skins and that sort of thing we could find now a few argentine ant the uh, queens hit the ride on one of the ships and came to america it served as a base for the global conquest every single thing in this country was an uh, asset not a liability now they uh, now they spread everywhere some tips of africa even um the cape of uh, good hope and then 
few parts of Britain, and they've in fact completely colonized New Zealand. So they're very intelligent. And then here's an ant, a poem on ants, which I wrote. I'll be skipping this in the interest of time. Now I'll be coming to spiders. There are several species of spiders. Those in the US might find several of these species over here. And also one very interesting species called Fridipus legus. They have very colorful fangs from what I've heard. Now, the, this is the most common spider around us, the daddy long legs. It's spread throughout the world. There are more than 45,000 known species of spiders found in habitats all over the world. There are different sorts of spiders other than daddy long legs, as some of you as guys might know. Are beaver spiders some of the most common web types? And then there are several other sorts. You can see the example of uh, cobweb and arbweb over here. And then these are two types that you may not have regularly noticed. This is a funnel web. The spiders that live inside here are related to terracullas, but they pose absolutely no offense to you unless they bite you or something. It might trigger an allergic reaction then, but um, there's no offense. You might uh, have a serious allergic reaction, but otherwise most people are not allergic to this. And <clears throat> also the sheet web, it's one of the predecessors to the art web along with the tent web. Here is how the art web spiders farm their webs. They uh, have a wide shape and then they have the center part, if you can see over here, which they use as an acrylic part for their web uh, lines. And then they spin, and then once they're finished, they spin the spider around the web lines, and then after a while, they're finished. I had one arbib spider once, and do you know how much time it actually took to finish its web? Two hours. Yes, such a massive structure, which is nearly one foot in two hours. Uh, so now they're very interesting in this way. I've also kept this spider as a pet. It's very common around your houses, if you notice. They're called tent web spiders. You can notice this um, that uh, funny structure under which the spider is sitting. You can also see the little spider's previous um, exoskeleton over there. And here are some of the pretty artists are web decorators. This is the signature spider. The reason they get their name as a signature spider is because from far away, if you look at these webs, it looks like someone that has written a signature on them with particularly white ink. While giant wood spiders and cyclosis spiders, they love decorating their web with colors and you know that sort of thing. Here is a male who's um, on a female's back. Uh, here is a species I will be only be uh, featuring. It's called the salt city and it's a jumping spider. This one, this cutie, beautiful thing is a peacock spider. I have a few other pets. They're called Telemonia dimidata, a fairly large species, if you ask me, and Hylus semicopleus. Now, uh, other species I've kept is this huntsman spiders. It's about the size of a fairly small tarantula. <coughs> yes, sorry. And Hazardis adansini. This is a male Hazardis adansini. And these two are the same female. The females are larger than the male. While this one is a British uh, unidentified species, I think it's a British, but it may not be. It's also a jumping spider. Here is one of my um, setups to assess their abilities to jump. You can adjust the height and length of the thing because you have several slots and they're adjustable. Uh, here are my defenses, yeah, my book and articles, and thank you. You can contact me at adzit2012 at gmail.com. Thank you, thank you, Adrit, for that lovely presentation. Uh, I'll open the floor now for questions. And those who have questions can do a raise hand, and I'll unmute you, and you can speak. Um, yes. So, Vagisan. Yes, Vagisan. 
very fascinated by what you are saying like i have not have like any prior interest in this but now like it sounded so fascinating like what like drove you to make all of these experiments for example like doing a styrofoam uh, set up to uh, make the spiders jump from one place to another it's well I'm sorry about the echo. Yes, but I'll tell you. Um, the thing that has happened is that I'm very interested in these jumping spiders. It's a particularly interesting place called Bandar Gata Badgers in Bangalore. Um, and that's where I got my passion from. And also, I had several of my other spiders. I saw them in the apartments. I I've seen all these spiders in the apartments. That's what drove me. and also i've seen several people keeping these on the internet i also have a quite a ferocious pet over here she is is wait i'll just remove my background if i can um uh, if it is possible like can you show one arthropod can you just take him take it and show one but i think you may have a lot in your house I do have quite a few. Here is one of my most ferocious. Oops. Okay. Um. Behold my praying mantis. Ah. A praying uh, mantis. It's a praying wow. mantis. How did you get that? That's super. I'm like, and I did not. My um, my father my father I know it looks quite alien like I told him to collect a few animals if he saw them I uh, so I don't keep them in captivity for a very long time I do just observe them and release them I also have a particularly delightful um wait a sec I'm just about to yeah hello yeah hi um you need to think. She is a baby menemidus, the same one as one adult specimen. Now I'll just try to show her to you. Look at that. Just red. Look, she just moved. Um, oh, that that tiny. Oh, she just uh, so jumped on her. It tree. seems like you you have a lot. You have a no, big collection no, of. Not no, uh, no, not a lot. Like similar. So like people, ah, uh, sim like usually like like lots of people are like collectors of coins. Ah, uh, like I have like coins from specimens from ah uh, about forty countries and and similarly like you actually have ah uh, arthropod collection. It I think it's a very rare hobby. Um. Well, I don't exactly collect arts part to the interest of a hobby. I simply love to study them. I'm getting a new golden ant colony next week. In fact. <laughs> okay. okay, I understand. I'm sure Vagisan is going to contact you for this. And <laughs> right. thank you, Vagisan, for that question. Uh, ask your question. It's uh, my name is Vina Marasai. Uh, go ahead. So, do spiders grow um big? Well, it depends on the species. It depends on the species. Now, okay. what I'm saying by species is that different sorts of spiders. The ones I'm showing you <clears throat> just now, I showed you a baby. Right here's what the adults look like. The big guys <clears throat> look over oh, here. He's just about one centimeter. Big. What's it? Yes. So it depends on the species. Some of the really big ones, like tarantulas, can grow up to this big at least. But okay. then, but they're not found in India. Okay. Thank you. I'd be glad to answer the questions. Yes. Swasti. Um, Yes. So, how many pets like this do you have in total? Um, it well, 
depends on that I <clears throat> am. So if I'm in one of my grandparents' house, I usually have a lot of biodiversity. And when I'm traveling over here, which is my main base, I have a lot of biodiversity too, because <clears throat> I have a park just next to my home. So there's a lot of birds and, you know, that sort of thing piling in. Oh, nice. Uh, Adrit, uh, you know, on this question of Swasti, maybe you can just tell what are the different varieties of pets that you have currently at your home. Right. Just name All them. Right. Yeah. I, I have one beta fish. I'm treating him for a disease I've never, never seen before. And then there's, there's a Dematis who I'm planning to release very soon. And then my two spiders, once the baby and once the adult. I I have more if it if I use I I regularly go on these um ant hunting trips and you know that sort of thing for exploring the biodiversity in my area. I also have quite a few <clears throat> you could say snails, yeah. And what about what happened to the vast? The wasps, um, yes, they're all, they're really all interesting, but they're not here anymore. I, this, they're, they're gone. So okay. that's the same thing. Okay. Uh, there was one more question, um, you know, that came in the chat that what do you feed the spiders with? That's a very regular question that I'm asked. So it depends on the species. These Hazarias and Menami, the sea, they like to eat anything they can get on, from cockroaches to, yeah. And the little ones eat fruit flies. That's how they're very urbanly adapted to these sort of environments. So do you catch them and put them in the box? Um, I... You know, uh, people have a playing tomb in India, right? So um, I, there's a lot of suit flies in there. So I love catching them and then feeding them to my spiders. I'm sure all the insects in your house would be scared of you. Right? You'll be like your local dada for them. No, 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 no. <laughs> they, can't, they can't identify me, sir. <laughs> Just joking. Uh, Bhagavat. Uh, yeah, so I have uh, observed a daddy long leg spider. So always uh, after some time it hangs upside down. So I don't know why it hangs upside down. So can you? That's been something I've been always trying to <coughs> identify because, but the reason is that they always want to have some sort of a signal. I think that web is based on that sort of a thing. So if they face front, they have more of the signal than when they face back. They, <clears throat> the top of the web is like an escape route for them. The bottom of the web means death. So that's the principle they're using. Okay, thank you. Vasudha? Yeah, um, I'm so glad to be a part of this uh, series. Frankly, it's such a learning experience from each and every one of the speakers. Phenomenal presentation, Adrit. It is so well uh, detailed and you're so articulate and your session is absolutely informative. I have a couple of questions. Um, you please feel free to answer the ones which you choose to and if they're too much, you uh, digress. I, no, I'd be, uh, I'd be uh, happy to answer all of them. I'd be happy to answer all of them. All right. So um, first question I had was, I've heard this term as arachnids is what we associate with spiders in general. So are, is there a distinct difference between arachnids and arthropods? That's the first question. No, um, there's no distinct difference between arachnids and arthropods. You see, arachnids are uh, nested within calicarates, which are nested within arthropods. So there's arthropods, in fact, they're not a separate group. Okay. Uh, and the uh, second question was, um, so we've heard that, uh, you know, spiders can also produce silk. Am I, am I right? Yes. Yes. So, uh, but spider silk, though, it's considered to be so much more efficient in terms of tensile uh, strength and material, which is much more in demand in today's uh, world. Uh, it's harder to cultivate 
uh, spider silk, just the way we do sericulture with uh, regular silk yarn, it's so much more harder to do it with spider silk. So is any of your observation or research directed towards that to wonder I, why spider silk is hard to cultivate? Yes. Um, and the thing is, because spiders, they will give up if they're like, for example, if we have this brain thing, we have this main thing. Now, the spider is forced to build its web inside it because it has absolutely nowhere else to go if you shut it inside the box. Now, what the curious thing is, is that if you destroy the spider web quite a few other times, it will simply go away and build it somewhere else where it thinks it's safe. Now, that makes it very hard because uh, you don't like keeping spiders confined. Even just one spider can produce only this much silk in a lifetime. That's not, not even enough to, like, this much silk in this much thread and um, this thick. It's not a lot, and you can't exactly make a spider spin it and spin it and spin it. It's pretty much, um, you could engineer bacteria to do it. Like, if you got them to produce spy join one and spy join two, you could engineer bacteria to do it. But, uh, and there are a few German teams working on it. There's also this discovery of um, they genetically engineered uh, goats to produce spider silk in their milk. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, and my last question to you here would be, uh, so we spoke about aphids. You showed those beautiful pictures where you are uh, admiring the aphids. So uh, my question to you is generally aphids are viewed as a destructive pest in a garden environment. And we use probably beetles to, uh, or the ladybugs uh, more precisely to help cater to that pest symbiotic relationship. So in your view, are there any pests? Do you view any insects, arachnids, or arthropods as pests at all? Because we think in this uh, symbiotic environment, there is that prey or predator, uh, prey predator uh, relationship. So do you actually look at any of them at all as pests? Um, generally not. I don't look at them as pests. Pests yes, generally. Um, I, because the reason is they all have their own role in the environment. See, if you completely um, just neglect an aphid species, kill it off, then there's also an indirect thing. Some helpful ants will die off, and then something that plays on those helpful ants mainly will die off. Like if you remove the aphids, ants will disappear. If not ants, ant eaters will disappear. Then and it is absolutely nothing plays on and you've gotten a whole species uh, and you've gotten completely three species eradicated which is a huge uh, impact to the environment to the you know all the pumas and everything which eat the anteaters after it's dead and that sort of thing all right all right thank you so much for your responses adrit it's uh, really informative thank you thank you a lot it's welcome <clears throat> Johan? Uh, I've actually always heard everywhere that the more the smaller the spider, the uh, more venomous it is. Is it actually true? You said the smaller the spider, the more venomous it is. Yeah. Did I hear you correctly? Okay. Now, the thing is that lots of people zoom in that daddy long legs have very dangerous venom, but the truth is that they don't actually have <clears throat> any venom at all. They only have very little, and even then it's not enough to affect a human, even if it is neurotoxic. And the thing that's, well, it's not true, in fact, because the smaller spiders, even if they are dangerous, they have two tiny and delicate fans to break through human skin. They already even bite. Our little deer jumping spiders over here with great visual eyesight, they could cause allergies and red rashes in the area, but that is not because of the, you know, danger of spider bite. That rumor okay. is not true. Okay. Yeah, got it. Thank you, Johan. Um, any any other questions before we close? All right. So thank you so much, uh, Adrit, for this wonderful presentation.